Hi everyone, this is QA Shahid and in this video we're finally going to start looking at Docker Compose. So Docker Compose was something we installed as an addition in the second video in this series and at the time all I said was it is in your interest to install it because it is something that can help you to orchestrate the installation and management of multiple containers. In the previous video, what we actually did was we downloaded two different images and we containerized them both and we got one linked to another, which basically ended up us being able to use WordPress, which was quite great. In this video, what we're actually going to do is take a deeper understanding and a deeper look at trying to essentially do that same experience, but a lot more easily. So in this video we are actually going to look at Docker Compose and what the Docker Compose does is that it allows us to spin out multiple images as containers very very easily and very very quickly. So again if you wish to follow the blog post then please just follow this link here which should be in the description below. The advantage you get to doing this is that you will be able to follow my blog post and you'll be notified of my videos a lot earlier because my blog post are published earlier than my videos and it might be more convenient for you to follow in text than in a video. So what is Docker Compose? So what Docker Compose is is essentially a method in Docker or a function in Docker or a command in Docker that allows us to provide it a YAML file which is basically a file that contains information about images in this instance and it then spins out images as containers. So if you remember in the previous video, we had a WordPress image and we had a MySQL image. We ran them as containers and we provided some more info and these were the commands we used. And then that was it. Docker Compose is basically taking all of this information and populating it as a YAML file instead. So in this video what we're going to do is actually create a file that looks something like this and this is going to be a yaml file and then we're going to run through some docker compose commands and start to see the advantage you get by constructing yaml files instead of manually running containers Okay, so the first thing we're going to do really quickly is just to make sure we're not running any images. And since we don't have any images, therefore we won't have any containers. Great. So the first thing we really need to do is navigate to a directory where we would probably want to create our YAML file. So let's do that first really quickly. So I am going to navigate to my documents folder and in here I'm just going to create a docker folder and inside the docker folder I am going to try and run docker compose and then ps. So what this would have done is listed all the current containers that are running as part of Docker Compose. And when it does this, what it does is it tries to use a YAML file to determine the instances of the images of containers it should try and look for. Now since this particular directory doesn't contain any, I got a really lovely warning message basically telling me that there isn't a YAML file that can be used. So what we need to do is actually create a YAML file. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to create this YAML file and I'm going to use touch to do this. So just in case if you haven't used touch before, touch is simply a command that allows you to really quickly create a file. If I now do an ls, 
I can now see that the directory contains this particular file. So I am now going to use Vim to edit this file. Okay, so what do we need to provide in this file to be able to use it as a valid file? Well, the first thing we want to do is provide a version space and we want the version to be of two. Now, before we go through the rest of this file, it's important to understand that the spacing of words, the indentation, the letters and characters and case sensitivity of everything you write is very important to the YAML file. If you get even the slightest of syntax or spacing incorrect, then your file will not be run by Docker Compose. Docker Compose sadly is very, very special about the format of a file and we need to try our best to adhere to it. So really quickly, what have I typed in? Well, I've typed in version in lowercase, colon, space, and then two in single quotes. And then a space, and then a new line, and a new line, and on the second new line, I'm going to say services, and then colon, and after that, new line, new line, and then a space, and in here, I'm going to say my SQL, colon and then two spaces in and in this I am going to provide the name of the image and the name of the image is going to be the same name of the image that you would have pulled so space and the name of the image that we pulled in the previous video was my SQL so this is what I'm going to provide here now if you remember for SQL we also provided an environment variable called my SQL underscore root underscore password and this had the value of password but this was an environment variable so we actually need to provide it as an environment variable and the environment variable needs to be indented in as a space also and if I remember right, that's pretty much it. That is all the stuff that we provided for MySQL. Now we had another container as well, which was the WordPress container. So we downloaded a WordPress image and we converted that into a container. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say WordPress. And first of all, we need to provide the name of the image, which was WordPress. And the next thing we provided was the ports. So to provide a port, it is space and then dash and then 80, 80, colon 80. And we also in this instance need to provide an environment variable. So this environment variable would basically be the password for the WordPress database. Now, Strictly speaking, you don't have to because by default, this value is automatically populated with the password from MySQL. So I would say password, and in this case, the value of password is password. And this is what the YAML file looks like. So hopefully I've got the syntax right first time. I didn't copy paste this in. I just wanted to write this, but naturally this will be provided in my blog post. So since you can't copy paste it from the video for obvious reasons, you should be able to go to my blog post and copy paste it from there instead. And the indentation in my blog post should all be correct. Now notice one thing. When we manually did this, we actually linked the two containers together. But in this instance, we aren't. And that is because the link it is explicitly done via the version. So let's try and save this. And let's try to run it. And this time to run it, we are going to say docker compose and we're going to use the start command. So it looks like I made some syntactical errors in the YAML file. So let's go ahead and try and edit that.
So it looks like I added in a colon after WordPress image here. So hopefully this will resolve the issue and let me try and start it. And it looks like I got an error. Okay. If that's the case, then instead of starting, I will try and use Docker Compose up instead. Ah, of course. So the reason it threw an error was because I tried to start something. When you try and start something, it assumes that you've already pulled the images. Obviously, I hadn't. So I used Docker Compose up instead. Docker Compose up is one of the commands we were going to look at, and it consists of a number of things. Primarily, it consists of actually pulling in any relevant images and then actually starting them. So you can't actually run docker start on a YAML file where the images don't exist. So it looks like it's pulling in both the images and at some point it should start running them both. So let's just wait until it gets to a state where it tells us that everything is up and running. Okay, so it looks like it might be running. So really quickly, let's navigate to a browser and we'll do the same thing we did last time. We'll just go to 192.168.9.100 and it looks like it's actually running WordPress. So this is great. It's doing exactly what we wanted. But the difference here is now it is doing it through the YAML file instead. So let's actually keep this window open and let's open up another Docker window. So in here, let's actually try and follow some of the other commands. So we tried to start the Docker instance last time, but we weren't able to do that. So this time, let's actually try and use Docker Compose. And this time, let's do a PS minus A. Oops, just a PS then. Of course it won't because we're not in the right directory. So let's navigate to that directory really quickly. And now let's do docker compose PS. And this is now telling us the state of both of those containers and they both appear to be up and running, which is correct because we were able to navigate to our WordPress site. Now let's go ahead and actually stop them. So to stop them, we're going to say docker compose stop. And notice in the logs up here, they're actually stopped and they're stopped here as well. So now if we do a docker compose PS, we can see that they have both indeed stopped. Now, finally, let's actually try and stop them again. So here we're just going to say docker compose start so what have we learned in this video well this video was an extension of the last video in the last video we looked at how to run multiple containers by linking one to another and in this video we basically took that knowledge and converted it into a yaml file the advantage we got by doing it by a yaml file was that we were able to control both containers very easily through a single file instead of having to pull and tear down containers and images individually. It basically gave us a little bit more control and it was certainly a lot more easier to do versus having to remember all of those parameters on the command line. We can actually use YAML files uh, very advantageously because what that means is we can now start to build a list of multiple containers and we might even be able to start thinking about trying to run maybe some Selenium based tests in CI in containers is it's something to think about. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching my video. I will see you in the next one.